Okay, <coughs> then, then the summary lecture. Um, <coughs> so the, the most important uh, elements here is that uh, this is EIA is economic impact assessment. Uh, you should have uh, achieved some advanced knowledge about theory and methods for economic impact assessment of transport infrastructure. So this is uh, <coughs> the main points to have a good overview of the theoretical foundation for cost-benefit analysis, to use the analytical models and calculations to carry out case studies, reference to the, <coughs> to the group work that I just presented. Um, some knowledge about strengths and weaknesses of this analytical framework. Um, In-depth knowledge about one selected aspect from the course as a topic for the essay, uh, which you have, and then, um, then do this uh, assignment writing to try to, to be precise in, 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 in formulating and discussing the, the problem that is stated here. So this is what we have tried to, to, to communicate to, to you during this course and that which we have tried to, to work with. Uh, the exam will be a written individual, as I said, uh, four hours counts 60% of the final grade um, and it's an open book exam. And there will be <coughs> a slight difference between the bachelor's and the master's exam. <laughs> uh, we'll see how it works out. Uh, one written course paper to be delivered in front of uh, we, we don't at this stage expect any problems, but, uh, but it's practical and we, we have the possibility to, ch to check uh, as, as, as you are familiar with from other courses. <coughs> you have this book uh, button to 2010 and you have um, handouts which are uploaded in front of and the lecture notes. Um, the book contains a lot of topics that are not covered in this course, uh, but it is uh, it is uh, worthwhile uh, having it because uh, if you are going to work with this type of uh, of uh, let's say problems, economic impact assessment, you will very soon turn into also discussing topics connected to public transport and so on and so forth. And uh, <coughs> but but in addition you have you have a number of papers that are uh, posted on Frontier as you know, and the lecture notes is also part of the of the readings here. We started so now I'm going through this uh, what we have done uh, more or less lecture by lecture. Uh, we started with an introduction to this course and, uh, and to describe this, uh, this transport sector. Because uh, <coughs> many of you are, uh, are and do not have a background in transport economics and, uh, and it's, uh, it's good to have an overview of the sector. Um, and also an overview of what are the drivers behind the demand, the development of demand in this sector. So we, <coughs> we know that uh, transport is strongly linked with economic growth. So we can expect the growth in, uh, in transport demand to increase with, uh, with a rather strong correlation to, to the business cycles. We have discussed <coughs> elasticities, income elasticities, which is, uh, which is the main parameter that we use to, to say something about the correlation between growth or business cycles and uh, demand for transport. 
So this is uh, <coughs> this is one very important driver for uh, for for growth. Um, and we presented a lot of ch charts of uh, distribution of uh, transport production between transport modes and so on and so forth. Um, I also presented you with an overview of the two main schools of thought when it comes to uh, economic impact assessment of, of transport infrastructure. One is the micro-oriented <coughs> cost-benefit analysis, um, which goes back to, uh, to uh, a French railway engineer called Gilles Dupuy from 1844 who did a study on the utility of public works. I cannot pronounce it in French, I'm afraid. But um, he actually discussed the cost-benefit uh, analysis connected to a, to a railway bridge in, in, in France at the time. And it was <coughs> and, uh, one of the main more modern work is done by Herbert Mooring from 1976, his textbook in, in transport economics. We try to, <coughs> to analyze on a project level, not on a program level, but on a project level, uh, the, where the investment and operating costs are held up against the benefits. Transport cost effect for users, <coughs> and we also include um, various external effects, which I will come back to here. Um, there is another school of thought which are more focused on the macro-oriented production function studies, uh, and they are focusing on using macro-production functions to capture not only the direct effects that is caused by, the, by, by each and every project, but also so-called spillover effects that are uh, expected to be present in the economy. And they are heavily discussed at the moment. And um, <coughs> the, the, this lecture contains a discussion of, uh, of the various uh, pros and cons and a short description of what this, this approach actually do. Um, <coughs> the current research is more focused on developing this framework than this framework. And the cost-benefit analysis framework is now, as we speak, developed <coughs> by means of a stronger focus on wider economic impacts, which was a topic for a separate lecture. We'll come back to that later on. And the, those wider economic impacts is an attempt to include spillover effects. In <coughs> and they are connected to uh, <coughs> increased productivity when you enlarge the size of an economic system by, for instance, linking two cities together or linking <coughs> cities and suburbs together and so on. So it's good to have an overview of the principal difference between the macro study and a CBA, because you will, you may, if you are starting to work in this business, you may meet people who say that this is rubbish, you should go for this one because they capture the whole picture, the whole set of effects. And then you can say no, they don't necessarily do that. There are, <coughs> there are many econometric problems with such studies. And also, in theory, they measure different things. Because you may have effects 
in the transport markets that are not captured here because you may have effects that are of benefit to each and every one of us in terms of let's say increased time for leisure which is a value which represents a value to the individuals but <coughs> leisure doesn't contribute much at the outset at least in the production function studies because leisure doesn't contribute much to output in the economy as a whole so there is a principal difference which i i spent some time trying to 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 um, to communicate to you but <coughs> having said that you are not expect, uh, expect i don't expect any details on the econometrics or uh, modeling or anything like that but you should be ever able to to discuss the principal differences between those two schools of thought. Um, <coughs> so the rest of the course was uh, focused mostly on, on cost-benefit analysis and various aspects connected to that. It's good to start with definitions. It's always good to start with definitions <coughs> when you are going to, to present a topic. What do we actually talk about here? It's a policy instrument that quantifies in monetary terms the value of all consequences. Applies to policies, programs, projects and so on. It's a way of deciding what society prefers. Um, CBA should inform the decision maker as to which option is social and most preferred. So that is the, the let's say, the main objective of, of doing cost-benefit analysis, to, to, to provide decision support. And later on in the course we discussed weaknesses, shortcomings connected to this as well, which, which I will come back to. Before we break, just draw your attention to this one, where <coughs> I derived the demand curve from a set of indifference curves and budget lines, where the budget lines rotates because of a, in this case, a reduced price of good one, which is transport. Good one is transport. <coughs> and then we have, we know the price change from P1 to P2. And we also know the, uh, the, um, the optimal adaptations where the budget lines are tangential to an indifference curve. And we, we derive from this information the demand curve. That's the theoretical concept. And there are, of course, uh, <coughs> a lot of, uh, lot of problems here when we, when we estimate demand curves empirically. We, we don't estimate these points, when, but we are trying to, to uh, collect data that can uh, help us to explain what is taken effect, taking effect when it comes to demand for transport. And I'll come back to that later on. But this is a theoretical workhorse, so to speak, for, uh, for cost-benefit analysis. Any questions? No. OK. Um, I think we, we break there for 15 minutes, for a continue. <coughs>